Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Liang Bo Niang, uh, a theoretical research staff from Center for Nanophase and Material Science at Oak Ridge National Lab. Today I will talk about PDSE2, a pentagonal layer material bridging the gap between two-dimensional and three-dimensional materials. So, and uh, here are the four papers we published. So, where I provide theoretical prediction and support. So, uh, this. In this talk, I will talk about electronic properties, vibrational properties, uh, as well as a versatile phase transition in PDSE2. So uh, PDSE2 uh, has very unique park and pentagonal network within each layer, which is different from the typical hexagonal network graphene, MS2, and black phosphorus. So and more importantly, so the average it has a very strong internet coupling. The average internet distance for PDSE2 is about 3.8 uh, angstrom, which is much shorter compared to the MOS2 and the black phosphorus. And it has a strong charge hybridization between the layers, so and um, with notable covalent contribution to the internet company. So therefore, PDSE2 has a unique pentagonal network with a strong internet company. And, and if we apply pressure about 10 gigapascal at room temperature, so PDS2 will transit into a three-dimensional pure structure with covalent bonds forming between uh, each layers. So, and this is uh, similar to the graphite into diamond transition. However, for 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 graphite into diamond, the transition requires much higher pressure and a much higher temperature, and the transition is irreversible. But for the PDS2, if we we need we need for the pressure. Uh, we will have automatic phase tran transition back to the layer structure. So this indicating PDSC2 is a very uh, unique 2D, uh, uh, two dimensional layer structure. So um, we then carried out the first principle of density functional theory DFD calculations. And, uh, and we find out the PDSC2 has very wide band cap variation from single layer to bulk, uh, you know, from 1.3 EV to 0 EV. So this has been confirmed by our uh, micro uh, microabsorption optical uh, measurements. So therefore, indeed, PDSC2 show wide band gap variation due to the strong internet coupling. So then our instrumental collaborators fabricate uh, transistor devices of PDSC2 samples uh, with the different thickness. And the key messages, uh, uh, there are three key messages. One, the first, is the carrying on up ratio for a uh, binary PDSC2 uh, can be up to 10 to 6 because it has uh, about a 1 EV electronic band gap. However, for the bulk PDSC2, because it has almost zero band gap, so the carrying on ratio is only about 10, uh, uh, very small. So for the PDSC2 sample, it has average electron mobility of about 80, mm, with highest one about 158. So this is not bad for first generation uh, transistor devices. And more importantly is PDS2 devices remain stable after exposure to air. So this is very uh, important for practical applications. So if you are interested in more details about the transistor devices, you can check this paper. So and why, why we are interested in PDS2? Here I show a side to side comparison for between different uh, 2D materials in terms in terms of their transistor uh, performance parameters. So graphene has very high carrying mobility, but it doesn't have a band gap. So it uh, so it uh, carrying on ratio is very low. So MOS2 has good band gap, high carrying on ratio, and good air stability, but it has relatively low carrying mobility. Black phosphorus, on the other hand, has relatively high mobility, good band gap, and relatively high carrying on ratio, but it is uh, it is bad in terms of air stability. So and um, on the other so so in contrast for PDSC2 it offers a good trade off for the carrying mobility, band gap, carrying on ratio and air stability. So that is why PDSC2 could potentially offer a practical option for uh, nano electronic applications. So moving on to second part of my talk but about the vibrational property of PDSE2. So generally speaking, there are two categories of phonon modes in layer materials. So I'm um, taking MOS2 as an uh, example. So we have the low frequency interlayer uh, modes and high frequency intralayer modes. So for the uh, for high frequency intralayer modes, where uh, 
so the different atoms can vibrate in the opposite direction within each layer. So the frequency are mostly determined by the strong intra-layer chemical bonds, um, and that's why they have a higher frequency. For the interlayer vibration modes, um, each atom within one layer vibrates in the same fashion. So it is the we have it is the layer and the layer that vibrates in the opposite directions. So therefore, the frequency mostly determined by the weak interlayer withdrawing forces. So that's why they have, generally speaking, lower frequency. Uh, you know, uh, uh, but no 50 wave number. So depending on the vibrational directions, so um, we have interlayer shear modes and interlayer breathing modes. And, on, um, in, and because each layer can be simplified as a single object during the vibrations, so we can use a simple linear chain model to describe the low frequency modes. So where each layer is simplified as a ball, the interlayer vibration can be described by a simple spring. So um, for n layer, we would have n minus 1 branch at shear mode along x direction, n minus 1 shear mode branches along y direction, n minus 1 breathing mode a branch along z direction. And, but if we diagonalize the, the, the force constant matrix determined by the linear chain model, so we can, uh, we can uh, obtain the frequency of the jth branch shear with breathing mode, uh, you know, in, described by this formula. So, uh, and in principle, this is good for any weakly coupled layer materials. And uh, here we show some examples. For free layer graphene, the high frequency G mode shows a little frequency change with thickness. But for the low frequency shear mode, the frequency changes significantly with the number of layers. And more importantly, the thickness dependence follow the sine function determined by the linear chain model, the formula here. So again, for the MOS tool, so the low frequency uh, vibrational modes show very significant frequency change up to 30 wave number from bulk, uh, from binary to bulk. Yet for the high frequency one mode, the frequency change is only about three wave number. This again, uh, you know, uh, you know, demonstrates the low frequency uh, one modes are more sensitive to the uh, sample thickness, so they can be used as fingerprints of the, and the sample uh, thickness compared to the high frequency one modes. So, um, um, therefore, it is natural for us to uh, study the low frequency one modes in PDSE tool. And the way, uh, first, we carried out the, the first principle uh, DFD phonon calculations. And for breathing mode in bulk PDSE tool, uh, again, each layer vibrates as a almost uh, a rigid uh, object, so which can be quantified by this uh, layer rigidity indicator delta R. So, uh, here, RMO is the atomic uh, vibrational displacement amplitude for MO. RS is the vibrational amplitude for S atom. So delta R is relative, simply speaking, is the relative vibrational difference between the different atoms within each layer. So if delta is zero, that means the layer is, in, uh, is totally rigid. So uh, according to our DFD calculation for bulk MOS2, uh, the delta R is almost zero. However, you know, for bulk PDSE tool, the delta R is very large, it's more than 40%, as also indicated by the vibrational uh, amplitude difference between the PD and the selenium atoms here, indicating by the blue arrows. So, and, and therefore, for the breathing mode in, in bulk PDSE tool, the frequencies are, uh, uh, you know, determined by both uh, interlayer and intralayer withdrawing forces. So for binary PDSE to the delta R is, is, is reduced, but is still pretty large, about 20%. So um, then motivated by our theoretical predictions, our instrumental collaborators are the same as carried out low frequency environment measurements. So the B1 shows the, uh, is the corresponds to uh, the low frequency interlayer breathing mode in binary, and these are the high frequency interlayer modes. Uh, we can tell the intensity of the low frequency breathing mode B1 is similar to the intensity of typical high frequency intralayer modes. So this is an unusual result because generally speaking, for free layer graphene and free layer MOS2, the low frequency Raman modes have much, much weaker intensities compared to the high frequency intralayer modes because the, the internet interaction is weak. 
However, because of PDS E2, the strong internet, internet interaction, so we have a covalent contribution from each layer, so the breathing mode intensity can be quite strong in, uh, in, in PDS E2. And then we measure the low frequency Raman spectra from 5 layer to nine, all the way to 19 layer. So because of the strong Raman signal of low frequency uh, internet modes in PDS E2, we can observe uh, many, many different branches of breathing mode in PDS E2, uh, which is quite different, again, different from most the 2D materials such as graphene and MS2. Only two or three branches of breathing mode can be detected. So and uh, and then we we uh, we do we carried out is uh, in in depth study of the thickness dependence of the breathing mode frequencies. So here the blue circles indicate instrumental data. The blue line uh, correspond to the linear channel model fitting. So uh, we can immediately tell for uh, for higher branches uh, we have a significant deviation. Uh, between the instrumental data and the linear chain model fitting uh, uh, results, um, the higher a breathing mode frequency is, the less rigid the layer become, the less uh, valid the linear chain model become. Uh, uh, so, so the larger deviation we have between the instrumental data and linear chain model. So, in other words, because the intra-layer restoring forces contribution uh, due to the layer partial rigidity uh, in PDS E2. We would have a significant deviation um, between the uh, the instrumental breathing mode frequency and the linear chain model. So um, so therefore we propose a corrected linear chain model here. So that includes the contribution from the intralayer with slowing forces. Um, using this correct linear chain model, we can obtain much better fitting corresponding to its mental data with, with its mental data. So um, finally, I will talk about the structural phase, uh, different structural phase transitions in PDS E2. So uh, according to the, uh, the, this website materials project, so we have many different structural phases for PDS E2 for possible uh, phase engineering that covers the different electronic properties such as the semiconducting and the, and the uh, mechanical properties. So, so recently our instrument collaborators are the same as and obtain the mechanic PD17 selenium 15 uh, structural phase transition and by using an uh, argon plasma irradiation. So the argon plasma can create a selenium defects uh, you know, on the sample surface, and uh, because the defects are highly mobile, they can diffuse away very quickly according to our DFD calculations. So that allows the, the phase transition from the 2D semiconducting to 3D mechanical uh, PD17 selenium 15. And uh, in, if we do control the sputtering, we would have uh, semiconducting PDS E2 in the middle, and we would have the mechanical PD17 selenium 15 on the left and the right side. So this form a single material field effect transistor with an ohmic contact, uh, so which will significantly improve the transistor performance. And furthermore, if we in, uh, in, uh, using strong argon plasma spot, sputtering, and we find out that the, the, we will, uh, after the sputtering, we will get a, uh, the surface will become uh, amorphous according to the uh, scanning tunneling microscopy measurements shown here. So, and uh, if we do high temperature annealing, we obtain some very well aligned uh, nanowire structure. And then we carried out DFD calculations, and uh, we find out that this, this nanowire corresponding to atomic precise pentagonal uh, nanoribbons, uh, you know, shown here. So if you are interested, you can check this paper for more details. So to conclude, so because of the strong and the beyond vulnerable in the company in PDS E2, so uh, you know, uh, with its unique pentagonal structure, it offers some very unusual electronic vibrational and structural properties, often lying between 2D and 3D materials. So thank you for your attention.